it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about different perspectives. So because um, I'm talking from the UK's perspective and from uh, SOAS, the School of Oriental and African Studies. And as you know, uh, we are only an observer in this Clarin network. Um, and, um, but it's really interesting to see that the work we are doing at the Endangered Languages Archive, which I'm representing here at the moment, is very much in line with uh, Clarin uh, methodology is supposed to be and uh, what Clarin resources are supposed to be. Uh, and I would like to talk about the new times that we are facing, also because of the pandemic and the new challenge that it brings and how the archives can help. Uh, I can give you an overview of the archives. So you see that we have in, in the Endangered Languages Archive, we have primary data, uh, several languages, several endangered languages in the world, not only um, um, African and um, Asian languages, but languages from everywhere. And, um, and what you can find is a rich source of diver diversified primary data for research and community projects, just a click away. So you have audio recordings, you have video recordings, photographs, timeline annotations, lexical databases, dictionaries and glossaries, papers on the language, on the different languages, and social linguistic surveys. So you can see from here that there is uh, materials to serve a lot of researchers from different disciplines. The problem is when, when you deal with language data, with primary data, that people are very much afraid, at least, at least in, in the humanities, to publish their materials, to make their materials available online because they think that the annotations are not good enough, so they restrict their, their, their resources. Or they think that uh, the video recording doesn't have the light and the sound that it was supposed to have, and they restrict their, their resources. But the problem is that these resources entail a lot of rich materials that can be used for teaching, and for further research at MA and uh, PhD level, but also at BA level. And I'm going to give you some examples of the work that we are doing at ELAR in order to bring these resources, which are collected in uh, following Clarence's methodology and um, Clarence's perspectives and how we are teaching people to collect the data in the right way, I would say, for preservation purposes, but also in a way that it allows the data to be used for different perspectives and for different purposes. So um, what we do at ELAR is that we train people. We, we work together with the Endangered Language Documentation Program, which gives grants to language documenters from BA, even to, to speakers of, of the communities that have no linguistic background, but want to document their own language, to PhD and postdoc students. And what we do, so we give these grants, not ELAR, but the Endangered Language Documentation Program, and um, everyone that gets a grant needs to have a training on several things like um, work plan, data management, uh, data processing and archiving. This involves annotations, so first data collection from right video recordings with the right formats and uh, right um, uh, sound formats. Also time aligned uh, annotations. Uh, using Elan, for instance, the creation of metadata, which is a very important part, and people are doesn't like to people don't like to create metadata that much because it's time consuming and, and they, they are not aware of the importance of the metadata to make data available and searchable. And um, and also all the archiving part. So it's uh, a full training from data collection to um, archiving and discoverability because they learn through these trainings that we do every year for the new grantees. Uh, they learn how to prepare their materials so they can be uh, explored and they can be used by different groups of users. So other linguists, but also uh, journalists, anthropologists, musicologists, botanists, and so on. So there's a bunch of, um, of um, researchers and uh, the general public that can use this data in a, a very, uh, in, in a different way, in a new way. And um, so, but these are a privileged group. These are the group, the group of people that get these grants. And we thought that uh, we are in a school that is, uh, to, is focused and has a very strong, as a strength in uh, language documentation um, and, and is focused in languages in Asia and Africa. And uh, we started to collaborate more, um, more actively with the linguistics department of, of our institution and to provide training on archiving, data management, and so on, but at different levels, from BA to uh, PhD courses. 
And the idea is that students, instead of learning, for instance, morphology or phonology uh, through a book, they can go to the archive, they can learn, they can learn, use the materials that are in the archive to see phonetic differences, to do phonetic research, or to do morphosyntactic analysis. They can learn how to improve annotations, how to create, how to enrich metadata. And the best part is they get interested, because we have already started this kind of uh, yeah, preliminary um, courses, integrated, or we are trying to integrate them into curricula so that they are part of, of the, the teaching uh, and not only an exception in the teaching and um, the students get interested in publishing their the data that they are collecting that on one side because everybody that does an M M MA at least an MA has to collect data their own data but through the pandemic we are not allowed to do field work now at the moment we are not allowed to travel and this is another challenge that um, um, the students are having the teachers are having as well universities too uh, but the archive can offer a solution for that because you can use data in the archive to write your own ma thesis or phd thesis we have an example of one student uh, he wrote his ma thesis based on data from a nigerian language that he found in the archive so he was interested in nigeria and di language diversity in nigeria he had no way to go to nigeria and because there was no funds, he, he couldn't have uh, the money to do the field work. And he thought, how can I use the archive to cover this purpose? And uh, he did his, his MA using the data from one of our collections in ICANN. And, um, and now he's writing his PhD also using um, uh, data from the archive. And these motivated other students to archive their own materials, even at a, a BA level or MA level, which is not very common. So what we do through the trainings that we do yearly and uh, the trainings that we are trying to integrate at the university, at SOAS, but also we are working together with other universities around the world, we could see that there is an increase in the quality and the amount of data that we collect. So better metadata, better formats, people are more aware of the kind of formats that they have to use and they have to collect their materials in order to preserve them uh, in, a, in a lifelong period. And uh, the quality of the collections, of course, is, uh, is also increasing. And uh, we could also observe um, that dialogue between different researchers, so not only linguists, but also anthropologists, botanists, um, musicologists, is increasing a lot. And there's a lot of collaborative work now. And uh, it was interesting to see that we have several journalists contacting us and also anthropologists contacting us and asking if they can improve or add to the collections that we have in the archive. So people are motivated to archive their own materials. And I think this is also part, this should be also part of uh, Clarin's uh, aims to um, make people aware of the importance of making primary data available. Because if you have the primary data available, you can create as many corpora as you want for different purposes. But the most important thing is that you first, you publish the primary data, you make, the, make this data available, and then you can work with your students on creating corpora, on further annotations and so on. But I think the, the step before is really important. And this is what we are trying to reach. Thank you.